There is no antidote for me. Who will have the fortune of facing me today? So many strings waiting to be pulled. Come, look me in the eyes. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I'll show you how to play Cassiopeia. Ability sequence is E max followed by Q and W, so you prioritize the damaging abilities first, and then you put points into your ultimate whenever possible, as this is your best engaged tool. We will be starting out with the E little one guys, because it is a low cooldown damaging ability that we can use to farm with, because it will refund the mana cost if we last hit something with it. But make sure that you only use it when the minions are super low HP because it barely deals any damage if the target isn't poisoned yet. And if you end up missing that a couple times and don't last hit the minions then you'll end up going oom really fast because it has a pretty high mana cost and it has a low cooldown. So just focus on farming guys and if you're going for trades then make sure that you are weaving in your auto attacks that is really really important because that way you also stack up your conqueror even faster. So level 2 you have your Q, um, when you hit that then the target will be poisoned and that's why your E is going to deal a lot more damage and it will also heal you. When you look for trades you want to make sure that the target is poisoned so you have to hit them with your Q or your W. Of course, allied poison also works, so if you have a Twitch, Teemo or a Singed, then he also has synergy there, because then she doesn't have to hit her Q or W to poison them. Now your W guys is going to poison them as well and it will slow them if they're standing on top of it but most importantly it is going to ground them. So it means that they will not be able to use flash or any other movement ability so it's very good for shutting down mobile champions like a Fizz, Talon, LeBlanc and so on. Because if they're caught in it then they will not be able to do anything. But it also has a pretty high cooldown, so you really want to be careful when using it. You want to make sure that you get a guaranteed hit. So you can, for example, follow up with your W after, right after using your ultimate, after getting that stun. That's a good way to use it, to make sure that they don't really escape it. When you go for trades, make sure the target is poisoned. Otherwise, don't use your E, because... It's not going to deal any damage and you'll end up losing a lot of mana. Really unfortunate with that Talon gang and I didn't really have mana for another E otherwise he would have been dead here. If you're wondering why I flashed out right there it's because Vladimir was on the other side and he would have turned on me as well and then obviously have ended up dying right there so we did not want to risk that. But yeah, Cassiopeia early game is pretty weak because of a high mana cost. She's a late game scaling champion. She's able to get 6 fully offensive AP items because her passive passively grants a bonus movement speed so she will not be able to buy boots. So that means she is very immobile early game but as she gets more levels then she will end up getting more movement speed than she would otherwise get from the boots. So that passive hurts you early game, but it's a huge advantage later on in the game because it allows you to buy 6 fully uh, items. Whereas other champions would only be able to get 5 because they also have to spend gold on boots. 
So honestly, just focus the early game on farming, guys. Last hit. With your E instead of your auto attacks, because you get to stack your passive up as well. Or uh, the tier, I mean. So get to scale up faster. So while all the champions farm with their auto attacks, Cashopia farms with their E, okay? Of course, in a matchup like Vladimir, uh, that's why she's really good against short to medium range champions like uh, Vladimir or a Rice because she has pretty much unmatched DPS and she's very good at kiting them as well when she gets that bonus movement speed from her Q. She's like a late game scaling hyper carry mage. She has ridiculous DPS potential. But you need to get to that stage as well. You want at least two or three items before you go fully aggressive. Now Vladimir is someone we can all in. We need to watch out for his W. If he misses or uh, misses up, then we can look for all ins. Still need to be careful though because he has a lot of burst damage. If he has that passive stacked up, his Q passive, that empowered one, and his ultimate ready, then we need to respect that. Now we have our ultimate up, so what happens is when we use it is that if the target faces us, then it is going to stun them, and if they are facing in another direction, then it's going to slow them. Obviously you want to look to get that stun, you, of course you can use that flash ultimate to surprise them. If you get that stun, then you can follow up with your W to ground them, and then you can just burst them down with your ease. Want to go for short trades and we can go all in if he doesn't have his empower queue up. When it's up then we need to respect that. Well your Q has a really low cooldown so you can constantly try to look for those hits and once you get those hits then you can look for engages. But it is very hard early game though. Um, Cassiopeia this season is a lot more squishy than she was last season because you don't really get HP from Landry's uh, anymore, so harder to trade with. Then we look for an all-in right there and then burst him down before his ultimate procs, so he doesn't really get the healing in time. So you don't always need to. Uh, I am so dead here, right here. That's really unfortunate, but you don't always need to hit your uh, ultimate stun. You don't need to stun them all the time. If the slow is enough for you to kill them, then that's fine as well. Oh, Grace also needs to watch out here. He's super low HP and talent. It's just going to burst him down. But of course, the main mythic item on Cashupia, the one you will be buying every single game, is the Lion Riss Anguish. First of all, the cooldown is really nice, so you can have your abilities on an even lower cooldown. And it has that super useful passive that works great with how Cassiopeia wants to play the game. She wants to look for those extended fights, that's where she shines, so... Blinders passive is perfect. As you can see, those E start to deal a lot more damage once you get some points into it. And you hit those poison targets. The thing is though, guys, if you want to sustain in the lane, then you can just Q the minions and then E them so you heal up. As I mentioned earlier, your E will heal you if you hit targets that are poisoned. Just try to be as annoying as possible with those Qs. If you hit an enemy champion, they will 
almost always back off because they will not be able to match the DPS you have with your Twin Fangs. That, yeah. That's the poison, that's great. Don't yet have enough for the uh, Lionris, still need a lot more gold. So just kill the minions here so we can heal up and make sure that we don't get one shot by a potential gank. Yes, that's unfortunate. That's great, we actually got a lot of a lot out of this um room right here, so that's fine. We still don't have enough for the Lion Restore, so that's a bit unfortunate. Because if you base at this point in the game, then you can't really buy anything. You can get a control ward, but that's about it. Because anything else you decide to buy is going to delay your power spike by a lot. So if you're healthy, then just stay in the lane, guys. And if you're low HP, then of course you can base and then you get a control ward or something. But you do not want to be purchasing all our components. So now we have enough for the Lion Resign Grace, so that's great. So this is a big first item power spike. There we go, so this is the main mythic item on Cassiopeia. As I mentioned earlier on, it is very good for extended trades, and that's why Cassio is really good at. The ability haste is also another really really important stat on Cashew, so she can have that E on as a low cooldown as possible so you can spam it in fights and really threat your opponents. Cashew is one of those champions that can actually destroy tanks as well because of her E, because she has a consistently high DPS. As your secondary summon spell guys, you can use pretty much whatever you want. What's really popular right now is Exhaust. If you're playing against someone who has a lot of burst or assassins or something, who has to... who relies on bursting you down, then you can use that. Otherwise Teleport is also really good because... it guarantees your safety. That is awesome, that was really good. Great that Graves came here in time. But yeah, Cassiopeia is a very mechanically dif difficult champion to play, but if you master her, then you will easily come out of top in those 1 vs 2s. Great. Good thing he got Vladimir as well, so we can keep pushing this way out here. Because what really sucks right now is that you need 1250 gold to get that large rut for your Archangel staff. It is a lot of gold uh, on a single base, so sometimes you'll be lucky enough to have it, other, other times you won't really have enough gold to purchase it, so we have to wait it out. See if he needs help with the uh, dragon, otherwise we can recall close to him, so if somebody engages, then we can just help him out. Talon is ganging bottom side, so see if we can help them out. They almost turned it around though. It's a bit unfortunate she flashed before I hit my W. If I hit it before she flashed, then she will not be able to flash, because it's going to ground her. We also need to be patient with it. As I mentioned, it has a really high cooldown. And it's like your only defensive ability without your ultimate that can lock down opponents, so be careful with it and be really patient.
Yeah, he is so dead. I think so, he should be, yeah. He did not respect the gang. It was a bit obvious though that Vladimir was going to upside because you could see it. See which direction he was moving towards, so I also end up, ended up dying here, so that's my bad. That's fine though. We did give away a gold bounty, so that's not the ideal situation, but we still have three kills for ourselves, so we are speeding up the scaling. But if we get that two and three item power spike, then we're just going to shred everyone. The thing is guys, Cassiopeia is very reliant on one items. Because he just spams that ability, so you want to make sure that you have enough mana to do so. So that's why it's really important to always buy the tier and the Archangels, and then all of your mythic items has to be one of the mana items. Nice, they got a kill bottom side, we can just keep pushing in this guy here. We hit one Q, then we can go in and trade. A lot of damage, that's why they want to respect Cassiopeia once she hits that Q. The only issue with Landris guys is because of the burn, then you won't really be able to poke them under the tower. Because the target, or rather the tower, will be focusing down because of the Landris passive that will constantly apply this burning thing on the uh, champion, so that's the only annoying thing about it. Otherwise, it is the best mythic item you can purchase on Cassiopeia because of the synergy. So my bot lane is coming towards the middle lane because they got the first tower in the bottom side. Not first or second, but we need to be rotating towards the solo lane in the bot lane because we do not want to be sharing the XP. We just have to let Senna farm mid and then we will head towards the bottom lane so we get everything for ourselves and we make sure that we actually scale towards the later stages. Saya is in the bottom side, normally if she walks back to her own base then we will be able to chase her down but since she is taken this way we will not be able to chase her because that blast plant is up so we are not going to lose all of this CS just to chase someone we can't really catch. She's most likely getting away so let's get the farm and XP guys that is also fine. So we have enough gold for the second core item, the Archangel Staffs, so of course Cassiopeia is very mana hungry so you always want to make sure that you are purchasing this item here. Do it after your mythic item though because it's really useless to have it as your first item, the Archangel, so right after your mythic item. So this is like a big power spike you have on Cassio, this is where she starts coming online in the game. You're gonna destroy people in one versus ones, especially if you have the exhaust, which is very very good against assassins and other champions would burst. Kind of air ramming mid here because they teleported and the dragon is coming up as well, so we also want some prior around that lane here. When you do play Cassiopeia in teamfights guys, you want to be staying back with your ADC and then you just hit Whoever is in the front, okay, because Cassiopeia has such high consistent DPS like an ADC does. You just want to stay back in safety and you just attack whoever is within range. It doesn't matter if it's the tank or the support or whoever is there. Just hit the target who's closest to you. Aatrox has so much healing, it's insane actually. Oh, I could almost have killed him. Um, thing is, the Landris was coming online right there because we are in an extended fight. But it would have ended up shredding this guy here, but if we had healing reduction then that would also have been great.
Now Cassiopeia's main problem guys is that she is immobile and people can kite her right, they can easily dash away or something and just avoid all of your damage. So what you can do here is that you get your Rylas as your third item. You're going to apply this slow on your ability so it becomes very easy for you to hit your Q or any ability with poisoning and then you can follow that up with your E's. It becomes very very difficult to kite Cassiopeia, especially when she's using Conqueror because you don't really have the bonus movement speed from the face rush. So at this stage of the game I always try to get the Rylas, unless they have so much MR that I absolutely need the white stuff. He's going bot so we just need to give up the lane here, um, he has teleport, I don't have TP so I can't really be the opposite side of where the uh, main objective is. Okay, this is not a very bad fight for us to take. I also messed up that ultimate right there, so... He has so much damage as well, Aatrox. It's ridiculous. He has MR item, anti-healing and uh, finished right regular, so... He's spiking damage this game, but this was a bad fight for us to take. We should have been more patient, GP wasn't there. I don't even remember if he had his ultimate up, so... It's not good to get caught out like this here, because that could result in the enemy team taking down the Baron. We almost have enough though for the Rylas, when we do, then we can easily kite everyone on their team. Vladimir will never be able to escape us, same goes for Aatrox, even though he's getting a lot of bonus movement speed, because uh, that slow is going to be so annoying for them. Especially when you combine that slow with the slow from Senna, because of a Glacial Augment, then we become really good at kiting them, so we can easily shut them down if they try to engage on top of us. It's like you place that W right below them in a teamfight guys, they just that because they cannot flash away, they cannot use any dashing abilities, so it's very good in teamfights. Especially if you can get a multi stun on your ultimate and then you follow up with that W and people are just completely immobilized. It's really easy for your other carries in the team to shred them down. The Baron is free though, Cassiopeia is very good at taking down the Baron because of a high consistent DPS, Thing of Senna is in the bottom lane so I really go for it at the moment. That's a bit unfortunate, we did overextend quite a bit here, that's not good. Yasena is in the bottom side, she should not be split pushing, but we should also not be fighting here. Or scaling up, and as long as they are not taking any of the major objectives, then we are fine, because Senna is getting a lot of gold and XP for herself. And I don't really like buying Murello on Cashew. The thing is guys, if you have a support who can build the anti-healing item, then the healing reduction you get from them is enough, so you don't have to buy Morello yourself. Unless you desperately need it, then it's fine to do so, of course. Wow, I think Grace, I think Grace would have died right there if uh, his auto attack didn't go through. I'm gonna contest the uh, last dragon, which is going to be the soul for us here. That's not the best dragon, but it's fine right now because we have GP, so his ultimate is going to be on a lower cooldown. And we also get some bonus moon speed when we use our ultimates. This 
This is great right here, so we get the dragon and we can take the baron as well. We do that then it should be pretty much GG's, there's no way for them to come back into the game and we also have enough gold for the Rylas so now we are really spiking. Just gonna spike from every single item from here and onwards. Does have the spirit visage, so he's going to take less damage from us, but Rylas is going to shred him. Okay, his flash is down, so that's actually pretty huge for us because that is going to make it harder for him to engage in fights. He needs to access our backline here, and he can't really do that without the flash. He will just be kited all game, so I'm totally fine with trading flashes here. Of course, Ketchup is very mana hungry, so a blue buff is ideal if you can get that from your jungler, but sometimes they will take it for themselves, especially if they are playing a mage in the jungle. But if you get the blue buff, then it's going to be really, really fun spamming those Cs and really shred people in fights. I'm gonna go ahead and get the Oblivion up guys here because they have so much healing that it is fine to do so. As I said earlier, I do dislike getting this item. Or a lot to buy a white stuff here, but this is totally fine to do because they have so much healing. It would be fine to get the Baron without my help. So we can just continue pushing down the middle lane here, there's really no reason for me to go to the Baron, they can't contest it, they have the jungler's dead, so... Try to be efficient with the time you have. Just push down the middle lane here guys, we have two waves coming in, and two cannon minions, they're just gonna shred the towers from long range, so... Great amount of damage. That Lulu Polymorph is so annoying though. They can mess you up in fights, so need to respect that as well. But a Cassiopeia with items can easily go for those 1 vs 2s, 1 vs 3s. That's pretty good. Right, and he's down as well, so this should be GG's guys, but this is pretty much what Cashupia is capable of if you play it safe in the early game and focus on scaling up. That was the guide, I hope this was helpful, as always see you guys in the next one.